What can a professional monitor for 40,000 euros do that your TV with OLED or QLED technology at home cannot do? And what can your TV at home possibly do better? There's a lot of confusion, especially in the area of HDR. OLED, QLED, HDR10+, Dolby Vision. Which one is best? I'm Florian Friedrich from FF Pictures and every day I create content that you may have already seen on Ultra HD Blu-ray or in streaming. Our company produces software that is made for post-production houses worldwide and used for HDR movies. Here in the grading suite, I personally did HDR remastering for about 20 different movie titles so far, converting them from their theatrical releases to Ultra HD HDR home theater releases. HDR 10 plus films for various studios I worked on include Stalingrad, Showgirls, The Outpost, Big Ugly, Born a Champion, um, and there's also uh, hybrid productions like Shadow in the Cloud, which has Dolby Vision and HDR 10 plus on one disc. I do know the various display technologies with their specific advantages and disadvantages, not only from my previous work as uh, managing director for a consumer electronics test laboratory, but also as the HDR subcommittee chair for ICDM, which is an international organization for standardization of display measurements. What actually is a mastering monitor and how is it that such a tiny device with only 32 inches of diagonal costs 40,000 euros? When creating HDR content, it comes down to the finest nuances. Every adjustment to the controller, no matter how small, must be exactly reflected on the display. A mastering monitor must reproduce shadow areas in a differentiated, contrasted manner and without color distortion. And it doesn't matter whether the rest of the image is light or dark. Bright areas, on the other hand, must appear with the luminosity of the signal. It doesn't matter if only a small section of the image is bright, like a reflection, or the entire screen. In addition, for colors it is very important to show not only precision and gradation up to 12-bit accuracy, but also color volume, meaning the capability of the display to show saturated colors in bright and dark areas of the image. A good mastering monitor does not burn in. Station logos, test patterns and similar elements do not leave any traces in the picture. In case of this Sony HX310, it is an LCD monitor with two LCD layers, one behind the other and a constantly strong LED background light leading to a luminance of up to 1000 nit per square meter. And since one LCD layer is responsible for dimming at the pixel level, there are consistently high contrast values of up to a million to one. No television today is capable of keeping up with that. A good television ideally comes very close to a mastering monitor, which means it has similar image properties. It's a difficult undertaking since TVs have to be much larger and cheaper. Here we see a new Neo QLED TV from Samsung, the QN95A. The Neo QLED technology is a further development of Samsung's QLED panel, which uses new quantum mini LEDs as a light source. These quantum mini LEDs are now working without a housing or a lens, so they are much more compact. This means that more LEDs can be accommodated in a smaller space and the dimming is more precise. On the other hand, we have the C1 from LG, a 48 inch older TV, with self-limiting pixels, of course. And in the middle, we have our reference, the previously discussed mastering monitor. And I've already taken the time to make a detailed comparison. One thing is clear, no TV can do what our mastering monitor does. On the other hand, every inch of diagonal is important when you're dealing with HDR and 4K images. Incidentally, there are also TVs in post-production houses. These TVs are used as client monitors. It's for preview purposes. They don't represent the signal in a binding manner. It's not like the mastering monitor. So please be aware, whenever you hear that a TV is in a post-production house, it's a client monitor. It's not for serious content creation. This LG OLED is one of these client monitors and it has a generally very good image quality with deep blacks, 
even from the side. The colors are very accurate in the medium brightness range and can also be calibrated. On the other hand, the device shows weaknesses in terms of color volume, where depending on the image content, large saturated color areas do not shine with excessively high brightness or appear desaturated. Burn-in effects are also possible and if the image is to be HDR Snow White, it will instead lose its brightness. Because we have a highly saturated and bright color bars pattern on screen, you can see that these areas um, are significantly dimmer than on the reference monitor or in the QLED TV. Same for this image here. The Neo QLED TV from Samsung here does not have these weaknesses of a significantly reduced color volume and in particular uh, bright scenes can be reproduced at a very good level. In many situations the TV presents an image that comes very close to that of the mastering monitor. Its disadvantage is the not quite as deep black in situations where dark images are combined with bright highlights. Ultimately it can be said that you get incredibly good televisions for your cinema at home these days. Of course there are a lot of different dynamic controls increasing the dynamic range and the color fidelity on a like dynamic basis but if you pick the right film mode and if you use some test patterns to fine-tune for example you can get a, an image that is extremely close to that of the mastering monitor. If you watch HDR movies in a living room with uh, some ambient light, I would recommend to get a Neo QLED TV. Uh, that's simply because of the light output power. And that's one of the reasons why I'm using a Neo QLED as well, even in 8K. Dynamic metadata is helping modern TVs scene by scene to make tone mapping adjustments in order to get close to the impression on the mastering monitor. TVs with lower capabilities in terms of uh, luminance and color volume highly benefit from scene-by-scene -scene dynamic metadata. So this scene-by-scene -scene dynamic metadata is helping those TVs in order to make dynamic tone mapping decisions in order to get closer to the image impression on the mastering monitor. If your TV is already close to the capabilities of a mastering monitor, the need of dynamic metadata is a lot lower. There are two formats for dynamic metadata that compete with each other, HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. Both formats are specified in the same group of standards, SMT 2094, and primarily offer statistical metadata for every HDR scene. With simple information such as the minimum, maximum and average brightness of a scene, the television can make quite good decisions as to whether, for example, maintaining a high overall brightness is more important in a picture than the gradation of the bright areas of the picture. Example, with this picture on a bright day, a television with low brightness should take the basic brightness more seriously than the definition of the clouds. Basically, the formats HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision are extremely similar because they use the same color and brightness range. You can also use exactly the same signal for both formats and only add the respective dynamic metadata, as I prefer to do in my HDR remasterings. From my point of view, this path is unfortunately taken far too seldom, which is causing great confusion in the market. Although both formats potentially have certain advantages, with Dolby Vision there are trim pass controls in the metadata, and with HDR10+, Plus, much more detailed statistical metadata for each scene. The quality you get to see really depends primarily on that of the television and not on the dynamic HDR format. A colorful bright television with good contrast and close to the capabilities of the mastering monitor basically doesn't need this dynamic metadata. I hope I was able to connect a few dots for you regarding HDR and I would be delighted if you subscribe to our channel and visit our website FFTE.